Alright, so this video is going to serve as sort of a director's cut um, for the Game Jam game I did a couple weeks ago for Game Jam HQ's file base, Unconventional Weapons Game Jam. Um, I just wanted to do, put a video together to kind of talk about some of the things that I did in, in the game. So, um, like it says down here, uh, all... All the game was created in nine or ten days, uh, beginning of April, end of March, and all assets except the sound are from Game Dev HQ's file base. The sound, the voice acting, voice acting, uh, was me, and then the uh, music and a couple other random sound effects were from some assets from the Unity Asset Store. So uh, let's get right into the game here. I'm gonna hit start game. I did want to do like a cutscene here. this all started, they called me crazy for but it just ended up being like a little bit paper. of a... Once shit went down, a voice what line. was the first thing off the shelves? That's right, that sweet TP. Sweet TP. <laughs> I've been hiding out here for years, keeping my behind clean. Looks like they finally found me. This dude is the king of TP. They finally found me. my found TP. Coming for my There's only TV. one thing to do, and that's clean house. So we got some render get textures my gear here. Together and head out. I used to make Half-Life maps, and I always thought it'd be cool to have like videos like this. In Half-Life, you'd have to like hit the E button, and like it would take your whole screen and make that the camera. Um, so it's really cool, huh. just to be able to like have have a texture on a monitor like that that actually shows a, you know, a camera from, like, another room in the level. Um, so, I definitely appreciate that. Uh, and then, this is just the dude's bunker. We got TP around, you know. Little kitchen. Little, little table. Uh, some more supplies. Some more TP. So, one of the things I liked is how I was able to get, like, player messages into the game especially within like a week like i did um i felt like this came out as like a pretty complete game and and one of the things you could do is like walk up here and he'll be like he doesn't say anything i didn't get that far with the sound but it does say press e to open the box which i think is cool um so we'll get the ammo there and then if you walk over here and try to leave early need to get my gear it actually says a little need to get my gear. little voice line and says gather your need gear to get first. My gear. So I gotta go grab these guns first, and then it'll let me actually open the door. So stuff like that I think was pretty cool to get into a game jam game because it's, I, I I don't think that's like a normal thing for a lot of game jam games. <laughs> so we got our toilet paper, rocket launcher. It's very janky, and the zombies in general are very janky. We also have our soap gun here, and uh, as you can see, like, the toilet paper, like, kind of doesn't go totally flat on the zombies, and, like, I, I got to a point where it was like, eh, it looks goofy as hell, and I love it for being, like, so incredibly goofy, and so that's why I kind of just went with it. Um, could use the light. Could use the light. So that's another thing that I like. Again, with the, the message prompts and stuff, I think that's pretty cool that I was able to get that stuff in there. So let's say, uh, oh, oh, So this is me, the zombies are me. Uh, all that was, was my voice. Um, like I said, I got the flashlight on here, so the whole rest of this level is just dark. Like, I don't think you could possibly... Well, you can see it a little bit, I guess. But it's like, there's no light for the rest of the world. You can see it a little bit right there. I think as you get further in, it probably gets completely dark. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, again, the toilet paper, and, and there was the, uh... The little cardboard tubes, too, which I liked. So the toilet paper, like, explodes in the cardboard tubes. I mean, I, I think it came out pretty cool. <laughs> toilet paper flying everywhere. Cardboard tubes. The toilet paper is actually little uh, models of the towels from 
the bathroom props from Game Dev HQ. So, uh, let's go to our soap gun here. Soap gun, I got little bubbles coming off. Like, I, the soap gun kind of sucks. I freely admit that it's not it's not the greatest uh, weapon. Toilet paper gun came out pretty cool. Um, and then in here I have the little skeletons and stuff. I thought this whole area came out pretty neat. For my bungle, I do love this. <laughs> so it's seven hits to kill a zombie. I think to kill the zombies and the drones at the second level, I think it's seven hits for everything. Uh, at least with the toilet paper. With the soap gun, I think it would actually be like... Um, I think it would be, what, 33 hits or something like that? I think it only does 3 health damage each time you hit him with the soap gun. It is a lot faster than the other gun. Maybe it's not 3. I don't remember what I had the, the, the health, the damage set, set for. For that. And so you, you can shift to run as well in this game. Um, I probably should have just made that the default running speed. Because in the second level and on the boss fight, you, it definitely helps to shift and to sprint a lot. Like, otherwise it doesn't really make a difference to the game. So I kind of should have just made it the walking speed just a little bit faster than this. And just took out the ability to sprint at all. But, uh, whatever. So we keep going around this little crypt here. Uh, now, as you can see, this part, um, because, like, my level was, like, completely off. Oh, you can see a little flickering there, too. I did a pretty good job getting, uh, well, there's some more flickering. I thought I did a pretty good job getting some of the flickering gone. There's a ton of it now that I'm looking at this. But, uh, since the light's on and everything, I think you generally don't notice it much unless you're looking for it. Like, right now, I'm looking for so, uh, but I actually haven't noticed a lot of this flickering before now, so that's kind of interesting, actually. Oh, there's some there, too. Wow. Wow, flickering all over the place. But one of the things I ran into was, like, I made this whole other part of the catacombs down this way. And then, and, and I also made the, the little boss area in here that I'm going to go go into in a second. I made them both kind of at the same time, but I didn't have them attached to each other. And so when I went to attach them here, I, like, you can see this this walkway is kind of like crooked a little bit. So, I, I don't know, I just thought that was, uh... I, I mean, it works well enough. This part is like, obviously, kind of a glaring issue, but again, if you're just like walking through and just a player, you probably wouldn't even notice that. You know? I just walk right by it. But this is the director's cut, so that's kind of the stuff you can see. And, like, uh, yeah. A lot of the stuff didn't line up, so I have, like, multiple ceilings up there and stuff. There's, like, a column that's, like, flickering all of it. I have, like, three ceilings up above me in some parts of this. Um, just to get, like, just to not have, like, holes in it. Um because I, I didn't have anything lined up well at, at all. <laughs> so maybe on the next project, it'll be lined up well. So when I go into this boss area, uh, two things are going to happen. This door is going to shut, which I don't have a sound effect for, but I do have a delay, and then my character is going to go, it's a trap. Um, also, what's going to happen is all the zombies in there are going to be triggered at the same time, and so their sound is, like, really loud. And... I didn't fix that in time, you know. I should have only had maybe like one or two of them, like doing like the alert sound, um, because there's like six of them, I think. Um, but that's just something that got left out because it's a game jam. You know, you only have a certain amount of time to do this stuff. So, trap. Say, ow. So this is like our first boss fight out of this game. 
Uh, pretty easy boss fight, really. It's not really even a boss, because it's they're really just on a nav mesh, and they're, they're like totally easy to like outsmart. There's no AI here like, whatsoever. They're just they're just coming for the player, and they're gonna like get stopped on anything, like the table and stuff. There's a bug. Um, I actually got damaged by that zombie on the floor because his hand was still active. So the collider on the hands, uh, on on the right hand, is what actually damages you. And and when the animation starts and to go like hit the player, that's when the collider becomes active. And uh, there's a bug where like if the zombie gets killed while that collider's active, I think it just doesn't reset or it doesn't like turn it off. And so if they die and their hand is still sitting there and you run over their hand, it actually hurts you. Um, fun little bug. Uh, <laughs> so that's level one. And if I try to open this door before I before they were all dead, it, it would have had like a lock sound to it. Uh, but now it's open because they're all dead. So it says press E to open door. Again, I really like the messages that I got in here. Um, it makes it seem like a, a more polished game than like maybe it actually is. Um, press E to open they door. They say the best hiding place is behind a cemetery, under a mountain, and in a bunker. I agree. And I, I, I meant to have that line be like, they say the best hiding place is behind a cemetery, uh, under a mountain, and also behind a cultist catacombs or something like that, but, and, and, and in a bunker, but, uh, I just was recording that stuff pretty quickly at the end of the game jam, so, uh, I think it still works. Maybe that would have been too much, you know, talking about the cultists or whatever. <laughs> There's a TP flying around, kind of, but, again, that looks janky, but I think it's hilarious, so... You know, there is that kind of trade-off where, like, some janky stuff isn't necessarily a bad thing all the time. So this level, we got some fog. We go up to the cemetery. And here we have our drone enemies. And our drone enemies are pretty neat. And I didn't talk about this in my video for the game jam. But the drone enemies are actually just zombies. I couldn't figure out how to get the nav mesh to work for them. Like on the fly it just wasn't working i was having some issues so literally what i did was i took a drone and i like attached it to a zombie's head and that's what all the zombies that's what all the drones actually are they're zombies with a drone on their head uh which i think is really cool it's like a very hacky way to do this like to do an enemy and stuff it's very hacked up uh, and it's not nearly the best way to do it, but actually Ow. the animation for when they die and stuff Actually looks kind of cool. Like it, it ended up. It was one of those things like Like this is not how I should have done this, but like You know that looks cool, and then I you know I have the smoke and stuff on them, which I think adds a nice touch, but like it worked just to attach the drone to the zombies head and so I just ran with it, you know um, one of those things that's like, yeah, I shouldn't have done it that way, but... <laughs> but you know what? It turned out okay. Oh, so the, the drones are shooting poop out. And if you get hit, there's like some brown stuff that comes up on the screen, which I like that effect. I do like that. And I also like how uh, I have different sounds for when the player gets hurt. Sometimes it's like, ow, and sometimes oof, you know, I, 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 had, I think I had three or four different sounds for that. Um, if I had more time, I would have recorded a whole bunch more sounds, and like, I wanted to have sounds for like, when the player sees an enemy, to be like, look at this ugly son of a bitch, or something, look at this dirty bastard, stuff like that, but I, I didn't get there. Um, Where the turds go? I do. <laughs> oh, that's the, the toilet paper. But I do like the little turds rolling around after they shoot them out. 
<laughs> and there's our other, um, on the rocket launcher, I didn't show this earlier, but that's our other, like, render texture there. Which, again, coming from, like, doing Half-Life level design back in the day, um, it's really cool to be able to do that kind of thing. Alright, so I just, like, threw, threw that on there. It's, like, completely worthless. Completely useless, but pretty cool. Uh, actually, before we go get the key, let's go down to the cemetery gate, right? So... Oh, I'm running out of health, too. I'm actually dying here. 16 health. I think there's health over here. Yes. Here comes the little drone. Kill this drone. One of the other things I like about the drones is that they shoot the poop out at you. Sometimes the toilet paper hits the poop in midair, and they just kind of, like, explode in midair. So you'll, like, shoot at them, and they won't... You won't hurt them, and they won't hurt you. And, like, I think that's just... <laughs> such a perfect... Like, cool thing. Because I didn't, like, mean to do that. But that's just kind of how it turned out. And obviously, if you're just throwing, like, physics objects at each other, like, obviously that's, like, the expected result. As, as an amateur game developer, it wasn't something that I really expected. It was, like, a happy accident, you know? So, if we come down here first, which... I thought maybe that's the, what the player would do. I wasn't really sure, but if you come down here first before getting the key, again, I have like a whole message system, which again, I'm really proud of this. Like, it doesn't seem like much, but I thought that was cool. And like, and the sound, you know, and I, I would have probably had the player actually say something, um, but I, you know, again, ran out of time for something like that. But then we run up here, so there's all these like little crypts and stuff. But then up here is supposed to be like the the grave diggers, uh, like shack. Basically, that's why we have a couple of shovels here. I didn't really dress it up any more than that. I was running out of time. You know, you gotta do what you could do. And then the key is pretty cool too. So I don't have the key yet. Um, actually, when I get, let me. Uh, change my thing. Let me move myself over here. So, when I get the key, you'll see above the health, a little key will appear, which I thought was pretty cool. <laughs> pretty cool. So now I know I have the key, you know? And it, it it's cool that it, like, it, it kind of goes with the lighting and stuff. Like, I, I just think that's a cool way to do, like, a little item pickup. Especially, like, a key, you know? Um... It probably could have been a little bit better, but I think that was that was pretty sweet. So we walk up here, door opens automatically, key disappears. I, I like that. I like how that turned out. Um, and so we leave the cemetery. And now we come to the road. Which, this part of the game was admittedly pretty rushed. It's literally just a bunch of cars on the road with, like, inside a canyon, basically so that you can't really go too far, you know? But you do have the, the cars to, like, kind of dodge around and stuff. Ouch. 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 Ow. Oof. That's, that's, the, three, that's the three sounds, I think. <laughs> so just a little car area. I think this could have been maybe a little bit shorter. I don't know. Um, it would have also helped if, like, if, like, the AI and stuff was better. And by AI, I mean, like, really, if I just put them on, like, kind of better pathfinding and stuff, I think it would have made a big difference. But it's not horrible the way it is right now. See, this, this is what I mean by, um, the shift to sprint as well. I've just been holding that for the entire second level. Um, so the walking speed is like this, and the running speed is just a little bit faster, but it makes a huge difference for like dodging that. The poop, the poop shoots. <laughs> the poop missiles. Um, so, and again, these things, this is like the one thing I talked about in my video for the game jam. Uh, but I am really proud of how this came out 
See, there again. Press E to open the box. I like that. I, I like how that turned out. And just how the health pickups and the ammo pickups turned out. Like, that's that's awesome. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know if anybody else would think that's awesome, but I certainly do like how that turned out. So... Um, let's go with the soap gun for now. And... Oh, there you go with the, the poop again. You can see my soap actually hit it in the air and the poop went flying like a different way. Which was kind of cool. Kind of cool. There's a little turd. <laughs> I like how it like, just kind of like rolls around for a little bit too. Uh, this guy's in the ground. I'm not sure why, because there's a mesh render. So, there's something up with that guy, and I, I never got around to actually figuring out what it was to get it fixed before the, you know, before the submission for the game jam. So. Oh, there was a nice... Right out of the sky. Hit that poop right out of the sky. So. Alright, let's keep going here. I don't know if I just hit the car a couple times there. I probably did. I think there are box gliders on the cars. Which maybe is less than ideal. Um. Tell you what, the drones look cool though. For being a drone attached to a zombie, like it turns out, it turned out pretty well. <laughs> I should have mentioned that in my uh, devlog because that was one of the coolest things that I ended up doing. Even though it's like completely like a hack job, what I did, not what you're supposed to do, but like they actually turn out really well for how I did it. Like I would not expect. It's a look as good as it does. They're enjoying it that way. Like, look at how that drone fell out of the sky. It was like, it was nice. It's pretty good. Alright, we got... I think that's everybody now. So now this is the end of the level. One of the things that I didn't get a chance to do, which has worried me when I've like sent this around for playtesting and right now I have 100 health so it wouldn't be a big deal but like I did make this message come up but it only comes up after two seconds so it says make sure you're ready but like if somebody was like having trouble with the rest of the level and then they didn't come and get like the health here or the health there's health right around here you know but if they didn't come and get this then when they get into the boss they're pretty much screwed I mean you could beat the boss without getting without getting hurt. It's not like that crazy of a uh, of a boss fight, but it's it's going to be pretty difficult. Like I I've had trouble with the boss fight at, at times. Like I get killed sometimes, like ridiculously. Um, but that was something I worried about, and like maybe I should have had like a like are you sure you want to go or something like that, and make this pop this message pop up like right away. But again. You know, it's it's a game made within like nine or ten days, so you know you can't really get everything done. But it's something that I'm gonna like think about in the future, especially like when you want to go to a boss fight. Like I could have put health pickups in the boss fight as well, and I thought about doing that, but I, I didn't I didn't actually do that. So um, you kind of have to go in with with a hundred health, or you're kind of screwed. The other thing I thought about is like maybe if if you die on the boss, then maybe you could you would have like a restart button that says like restart with full health, which, you know, like maybe if you die like two or three times, you know, you have like a counter going, and then if you die two or three times, then that button comes up like restart with full health. Um, I don't know. There's a couple different ways you could solve that, but I just didn't solve that at all for this for this game. But next time, maybe I will. Look at this big bastard. Time to take it to him. Oof. Oh, oh, he got me right in the right in the face with that turret gun. So this boss fight is kind of cool. I thought I did this in like a day, and it's really just like I don't know six or seven waypoints, 
and the boss just kind of flies around the six or seven waypoints around this little area where his like hangar is. Um, and I was gonna have a whole story about how this was like uh, the main character's neighbor and like how they talked on the on the on the walkie-talkies all the time and how they were good buddies and the neighbor like portrayed him because he needed like, toilet paper or something, but. I didn't, like, the, the story didn't go that far, it's not, <laughs> it's not that, uh, deep of a narrative, uh, with the way it turned out. But I do like how this boss fight came out, like, it actually looks pretty good, especially with how janky it was, like, right at first when I tried to implement it. Um, we use this gun a little bit. Toilet paper gun. Ooh, and there's the poop bomb. So, that's one of the things, too. The poop bomb is kind of buggy, so if you don't get close to the boss at all for the boss fight, get, he'll never lay a poop bomb. Um, it's based on, like, his collider. Ow. But I think once, once you hit the collider, he drops it every 10 seconds. So, I think... In, like, I think I, I would like to fix that so that he just starts dropping them automatically and that you don't have to, like, actually activate the boot bombs. Uh, or it could be one of those things, like, when you hurt the boss enough, then may maybe he starts doing the poop bombs, like, after he's, like, halfway down on health or something. That would be kind of cool. But again, I, I don't know how much I really want to put into, like, polishing this game up or anything. But I, I think it came out pretty good for like 9 or 10 days. And like, I would like to get it at least into a little bit better state than it actually is right now. I was thinking about converting it to HDRP. I don't know if I want to go through all that. I, I did sort of convert it, but like some of the stuff isn't working that well. Uh, like the toilet paper. Um, so I might just leave it as it is and just fix some of the bugs. And then maybe, like, put it out on, like, itch or something like that. Oh, man, I'm getting messed up here. I might die here. Like, again, so I'm down to 27 health. I'm the developer of this game. Um, you know, if you don't go into this fight with full health, you can easily get killed. Easily. I mean, you can get killed real quick. You, you can get... You, you can get through this fight without getting hurt at all, but... Oh, there we go. And that's the end. And I love this effect that I was able to accomplish. And just here. like that, it was over. In one big, glorious explosion of toilet paper. I closed my eyes. And when I came to, it wasn't the year 2042 like I thought. It was the year 2020. And I was stuck in quarantine because of the COVID-19 virus. It was all a silly dream. I know that sounds like a cop-out, and well, it is. Thanks for playing. So, that effect is definitely inspired by Half-Life 2 and the end of Half-Life 2, if you've ever played that. Um, I love how it came out though. And I got that done really quick. Like that did not take long at all. You know, it was just a matter of, uh, taking time dot time scale down to 0.01 or 0 0.001 or something like that. Um, and it, it came out so cool, especially like that wasn't maybe the best angle to, to kill the boss at. Um, if you're like, if he's like right in your face, then you see the whole explosion like going. Uh, and, and the toilet paper can be like flying off and that'll go all like in slow motion and stuff. I really love how that came out. And, uh, so that's really the reason I'm making this video <laughs> is to show off that effect a little bit. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll make another video of just that effect of like a, a good shot of it. But, um, that's this game, you know, I, I did want to do like a little playthrough and just kind of show it off and kind of comment on some of the different stuff that I went through uh, developing it and, and some of the different stuff that I'm, I'm pretty proud of for, for doing this game in like, you know, a, a, a week or 10 days or whatever it was. So um, that's the game. And then you go back to the main menu. And then if you hit start game, it won't actually start the game again. 
it bugs out. So, game jam game. <laughs> but anyway, that's it. Uh, I am Mike Reps, and this is my game, The Sanitizer. Uh, I'll be back with a new game pretty soon, probably. So.